of morning worship. I'm Bishop Billy Smith, and this is the day that the Lord has made, and we're going to rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. We're so glad to have all of you on today. We're so glad to have you, and we pray God that, that, pray that God will just continue uh, to bless you and that you will be impacted on this morning. Uh, good morning, Miss Shirley Sanders. Good morning. Good morning to you, uh, all of you that are on uh, we just thank God and we pray God's blessings upon you on this morning. Amen. We're going to get right into the scripture. Amen. And we want to pray. Father, we thank you for your grace and your mercy. We just thank you for another opportunity to be able to get up this morning, worship you, praise you, and to get into your word. And I pray, God, that you will let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. Oh, Lord, my strength and my redeemer. We pray for the sick. We pray for those that are going through issues or being affected by the pandemic. And, Father, we pray, God, that you will touch and that you would heal, deliver, and set free. God, we just thank you for it, and we honor you, and we bless your name, and we give you glory because it belongs to you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. I want to talk from a familiar story on um, this morning. I want to talk from Numbers, the 22nd chapter. Uh, Numbers, the 22nd chapter. And uh, we want to focus beginning at the first verse. Um, I hope this bless somebody and encourage somebody on today. Um, it's Numbers, the 22nd chapter and the first verse. I want to thank all of you who have inboxed me. All of you that have inboxed me and even um, sow the seed, I appreciate it. Um, I'm just doing what God instructed me to do was to get up every morning for one hour and uh, uh, teach his word and and teach and do positive, positive. We hear a lot of negative and, um, and, and a lot of negative going on and everybody is, uh, you know, is not fully out. Uh, some people are still home. Some people are still... Uh, kind of uh, weary of, of the virus and everything. And so I wanted to, um, well, the Lord laid it on my heart to get up and on the and on every morning and uh, try to encourage and try to um, speak positive and help to build the faith of people uh, to know that even though that we're experiencing what we're experiencing, that God is still God. And uh, he, he's still on the throne. He still sits high. He still looks low. He's still a protector. He's still a deliverer. He's still a healer. 
and um, we just thank God for that. Good morning, uh, Minister Yvonne Bethel. Good morning, Miss Catherine Campbell. Good morning to all of you. Okay, Numbers, the 22nd chapter, the first verse says, Then the children of Israel moved and camped in the plains of Moab and on the side of the Jordan across from Jericho. And now Balak, the son of Zippor, saw all that Israel had done to the Amorites, and Moab was exceedingly afraid of the people because they were many. And Moab was sick with and Moab was sick with dread because of children of the children of Israel. So Moab said to the elders of Midian, Now this company will lick up everything around us as an ox, lick, ox licks up the grass of the field. And Balak, the son of Zippor, was king of, Mo, of the Moabites. And at that time, then he sent messengers to Balaam, the son of Beor, of Pothar, which is, in, which is near the river and in the land of the sons of the people, to call him, saying, Look, a people has come from Egypt. See, they cover the face of the earth and are settling next to me. Therefore, please come at once, curse these people for me, for they are too mighty for me. Perhaps I shall be able to defeat them and drive them out of the land, for I know that he whom ye bless is blessed, and whom ye curse is cursed. Amen. Amen. I want to use for a topic for this morning, whom God bless, no man can curse. Whom God bless, no man can curse. Whom God has blessed, no man can curse. You're looking at this uh, situation here in Numbers, the 22nd chapter, and uh, two of the key players of uh, um, this particular chapter is uh, Balak and Balaam. Balak, Balak is the king uh, of, of the Moabites. And what is happening in a nutshell, what he has seen, he has seen that Israel, who is God's people, are, and know that God is with them. He see, sees how mighty they are. And everybody that has been in that path, they have annihilated. And he also saw the growth. He also saw the growth. He saw the population. And for, for if you listen to what it said in the verse, he said, for they are many and they are mighty. In other words, they are growing. Uh, there are a, a lot of them. And, uh, but ultimately, the one of the things that, um, that, that Balak failed to understand was God was with them. God was with them. They were not doing this by themselves. It was God who was enabling them to do what they were doing. And so Balak here is threatened by Israel. He's threatened by the people. He's threatened by them. And so what he does is in his self, in his flesh, and in his carnal mind, he decides that he wants to go and send men to Balaam. Balaam is the uh, mouthpiece of God who was speaking on behalf of God. He goes to Balaam because he wants Balaam to curse these people. He wants Balaam to curse these people. Uh, he ultimately does not want to deal with them. He don't want to be around them. He wants nothing to do with them. He wants them shut down because he does not want uh, to be annihilated. And he's seen, watch this. He's seen what God has done through them. He sees how mighty they are. You go back to the book of Exodus. That's what Pharaoh, Pharaoh, the Bible said before Israel was put in slavery, they was prosperous. They was prosperous at everything. And God was with them. And when Pharaoh came into power, he said, I'm going to do something about this because we got to, we got to do something about the children of Israel. And so he put them under hard bondage. He made them slaves. The Bible said they were building uh, cities. They were responsible for building buildings. And he was working them. And he was working them and working them and working them. And he had enslaved them. 
But the Bible said the more he afflicted them, the more they grew. Why? God is with them. These are God's people. No matter what predicament that, that, that Israel was in, then God was still with them in the midst of the slavery, in the midst of the hard bondage, in the midst of all of the chaotic situations that were going on through that time. God was still with them. And here in Numbers, the 22nd chapter, you're going to find where Balak is threatened. He's threatened by their very existence. And he knows God is with them. So he goes to Balaam and he sends people to Balaam to bid on his behalf to curse these people. Now, my brothers and sisters, I want you to understand that uh, that's why the enemy is so uh, uh, at the earths because we are ambassadors. We, we, we are the examples. We are speaking on behalf of Christ. We are, we are, we are the ones who are in the earth that are holding up, uh, the, the bloodstained banner that is, that is, that is testifying on his behalf. I said this the other Friday, we are evidence. We are evidence. Anytime that you have uh, given your life over to Christ and and the Bible said, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. You are a ambassador. You are a light to the world. Why? Because God delivered you. He delivered you out of your sin. What you used to be, what you used to be, what you used to be, what you used to do, how you used to have that bad attitude, how you, how you did do those things. But God has delivered you, and now that you are delivered, you are evidence, and because you're evidence, you are a light or an example to somebody else that may be currently doing the same thing that you did in the past, and you can testify and tell them, listen, I've been where you've been. I've done what you did, but there is a deliverer. There is a man that can change your life. And then when God is with you, See, the Bible said in the New Testament, he told the disciples, Lo, I'm with you, even until the end of the world. Balak is in his carnal mind and he's in his self because he's intimidated. Amen. And Satan, Satan, the spirit, because see, we don't wrestle. We don't wrestle against flesh and blood. We don't wrestle against flesh and blood. So even if, if people come at you, uh, people are uh, 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 what we call haters or people betray you, you're dealing with the spirit. Now the spirit has to, uh, that demon spirit uh, uh, um, that we call, uh, has to uh, live in something that's living. It has to live in something that's living. It has to live in something that is living. But I suggest to you today that sometimes we're fighting uh, this spirit wrong. We're going against the individual when we need to tackle the spirit because we know that it's a spirit. It's a spirit that is trying to uh, invade. It's a spirit that's trying to destroy. It's, a, it's a, a spirit that's trying to manipulate and deceive. And so Balak is in his flesh. And uh, he said, we got to do something because these people are too many. They're too mighty. We didn't saw what they did and God is with them. God is with them. So we got to do something. And we're going to go to Balaam and we're going to ask him to curse uh, these people so that we can be able to defeat them. But how many of y'all know whom God bless, whom God has his hands on, who God has established, who God has ordained, who God has put his stamp of approval on? I don't care what you say. I don't care what comes out of your mouth and how you try to curse people and how you try to uh, uh, manipulate people and condemn people. Uh, or try to hurt people with words that come out of your mouth. It's none effect. Why? Because God is with them. And no matter what the enemy say, he cannot change the agenda of God. If God said, I'm blessed, I'm blessed. I'm blessed in the city, blessed in the field. I'm blessed. If God said, I'm blessed, I am blessed. See, what we got to do is stop giving the enemy so much attention. Yeah, we got to stop giving him so much attention. 
You know, you know what God said concerning your life. You know how God has lined up your life. You know that God has established you in a place. So why are you going to try to debate and fight with the enemy when God ultimately has said that it's going to happen? And God is a God that cannot lie. Balak gets in his own carnal mind and says, I'm going to send, we, we're going to defeat them and I'm going to Balaam and I'm going to ask Balaam to curse these people. Now, let me say this to all of us that have gifts. Now, God gave you the gift. Every good and perfect gift comes from above. God gave you the gift, but he didn't give you the gift to mishandle it. Hello. He didn't give you the gift to mishandle it or to use it for your own personal gain. That's what was happening in the book of Acts when that damsel kept talking to Paul and Silas. Oh, these are the mighty men of God. And, they, and she kept doing it for about 40 days. And she kept saying it and she kept saying it. And this woman had a gift, but her gift was to make people money. And Paul got annoyed and cast that spirit out which the Bible said it was the spirit of definition, which interpretation is a python spirit, which if you break it down, it was just a demon. It was a demon that was accurately speaking. That's a whole different subject there. It was a demon that was accurately speaking. I said it's a demon that was accurately speaking. She knew who these men were. She knew who the, that spirit knew who those men were. They knew who that man was. So Paul got annoyed. And in the spirit, he got annoyed and he, he cast that spirit out of that woman. And it made the people that were getting rich off of her, that she was using the money to, to, to give them monetary gain and to, to do, do this sound familiar? Do it sound familiar how people are using their gifts to gain monetary uh, 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 gain, 50 lucre, playing with the emotions of people, playing with the minds of people? Amen. Playing with the minds of people, manipulating people, taking the scripture and manipulating people. Manipulating people's mind, taking parts of scripture, putting it together or even quoting it and taking it out of contents. Because you can't read one verse, you got to read the whole thing. When you read the Bible, you have to find out who the author was talking to. Why was he saying what he said? And what is he trying to address? What is the main point? What is the main point that he's trying to get over to, the, the, uh, to us? That's why when you read the word, you have to read the word entirely. You can't, take, you can't just take your verse and put it out there, and you have to be careful because some of the words in, in, in Scripture, you have to go and look look them up. And sometimes, not in a, a Webster dictionary, but find out what the biblical meaning is. That's why when you read the word, sometimes the Bible says, whosoever read it, let him understand. That means not looking through the eyes of flesh or the natural, but looking through the eyes of the Spirit. Looking through the eyes of the Spirit. And so now uh, Balak has decided that uh, we got to do something. I'm, uh, I got to curse these people. They, uh, I'm intimidated by them. I'm, I'm, uh, they're too many. They have annihilated everybody. So y'all go to Balaam and tell Balaam that I said that I want these people cursed. When you have a gift that comes from God, you cannot mishandle what God has given you. Remember Moses. God had spoke to Moses and told Moses to speak to the rock. Moses gets in his emotions. And instead of speaking to the rock, he strikes the rock. Now the water comes out, but it deprives God of his glory. The, listen to what I'm just saying to you. The, the water comes out, but it deprives God of his glory. Instead of Moses following instructions and doing what God said do, he gets caught up in his feelings and in his emotions because the people have made him mad. The people have made him upset. And he called them old rebel and he struck the rock twice. 
when all God told him to do was speak to the rock. And that's something to leave a divine conversation with God and God has given you divine instructions and you go and you do the opposite of what God told you to do. You do the opposite of what God told you to do because you caught up in your emotions. And my brothers and sisters, I want you to know today that if you have to be careful because there are a lot of people that are caught up in their emotions. People sometimes leave ministries and build churches and start churches because they're mad with who, who, who they were under or who they left or they did them wrong. And so your foundation is built on, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to build this so I'm going to get them back. I'm going to show them. Show them what? Because if your foundation is built on revenge, if your foundation is built on getting somebody back, if your foundation is built on proving something to somebody, then you may build, but it won't stand because your foundation is going is shaky. It's shaky. When God has instructed you to do something, when God has told you to do something, God is going to open up the door. He's going to make the, the path clear. He's going to open that door and everything is going to fall in place. So when you do leave another ministry, I don't know why I'm going this way. When you do leave another ministry and you start a, a ministry or you go and do what God has told you to do, you don't have to take folk from that ministry you left. Because God got people prepared for you to go. We have to be careful and we have to uh, 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 wonder uh, why we're doing things. Are we doing it to the glory of God? Or are we doing it so that we can be glorified or so we can say, I told you so? Or I'm doing it because I want to prove to them that I'm this and I'm that. I want to prove to them that 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 this is what they could have had if they wouldn't have uh, messed with me or made me leave. I'm going to leave that alone. All right. So now uh, Balak has sent his men to go and talk to Balaam. All right. He sent his man to go talk to Balaam. Now, the Bible said in the ninth verse, look what happens here. After he has sent the elders of Moab, the Bible said that God came to Balaam. See, God came to Balaam and asked him a question. Who are these men with you? Who are these men with you? God is asking Balaam this question. Remember, Balak has sent these elders to go and convince Balaam to curse Israel, these people. Look what Balaam said in the 10th verse. So Balaam said to God, Balaam said to God, Balak, the son of Zippor, the king of Moab, has sent to me saying, look, a people has come out of Egypt and they cover the face of the earth. Come now, curse them for me because perhaps I shall be able to overpower them and drive them out. He's repeating what was sent, the message that was sent to him. The 12th verse said, and God said to Balaam, look at this, you shall not go with them. Ye shall not curse the people, for they are blessed. Good morning, Miss Dorothy Morris. Good morning. Good morning, Miss Sarah Jen. You can't know. You can't curse the people because the people are blessed. You can't curse these people. You don't have, I don't give you permission. What did they do to him? Let's, let's examine that. What did they do to him? They didn't do anything. The only thing they did was they existed. They existed and God was with them because he said, God even utters this. You can't curse these people because they are blessed. He even, he even reminds Balaam, ain't nothing I can, you can't, no, you don't have permission. You don't have permission to curse these people. And my brothers and sisters, we got to sometimes come out of our feelings. Yeah, we, we hurt. We hurt. We hurt. Don't let nobody fool. I don't care how saved you are, how anointed you are, you hurt. If folk betray you, it hurt. If folk that you know that you thought had your back and they talking about you and, and really, it hurts. 
Don't let nobody fool you. A lot of times people tell you, well, just go on and get over it. Sometimes it hurt. It hurts. It hurt. It hurt. It hurt because you don't expect it from somebody that's sitting across the table, eating from with you, or, or sitting uh, around you, or around you 24-7. You don't expect it from them. Then when it happens, it does something to you emotionally because you are connected to those people emotionally. You really loved them. You didn't, you, you, and you thought they really loved you. You thought that they really loved you. You thought that they really had your back. You thought you thought it, we pray together. We we get up. We pray together. We 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 get in church. We testify. We 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 just fellowship together and everything. You didn't know that that person had a hidden agenda on the inside. And when it comes out, my brothers and sisters, it hurts. It hurts. So now, uh, God has told Balaam, he asked him first, who are these people with you? Who are, who are these men? And that's a whole text by itself because he asked him, who, who are they? Which means evidently, I know God is an all-knowing God, but I believe, I'm just saying, I believe that he was saying that I don't know them according to uh, the spirit. Who are these men? These men come to curse come to ask me to curse uh, the people. And God tells him, you can't do that because they bless. Whom God bless, no man can curse. I don't care who's speaking curses over you. I don't care who, who's saying this and saying that. If God said you bless, you blessed. Hallelujah. And sometimes, and, and I'm going this way, sometimes people, especially in the body of Christ, will try to speak curses on people that don't do what we want them to do. I said this about that Jezebel spirit. That Jezebel spirit was a controlling spirit. And when folk didn't do what Jezebel did, Jezebel um, made them suffer consequences. She had influence. I told you uh, yesterday what happened with Naboth. When they couldn't get his vineyard and Ahab came to her and told her, hey, uh, 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 what's wrong? She asked him, what's wrong with you? He said, I'm upset. I tried to uh, get neighbor to, to give me his vineyard and he wouldn't give it to me. Jezebel said, you go ahead and eat it. I'll take care of it. Jezebel wrote a letter and said that neighbor had blasphemed. She lied. And had and caused Naboth to be killed. And after Naboth was killed, they thought that they could go and get the vineyard because they thought they had accomplished what they had set out to do. But let me tell you all this today. God's eyes run to and fro. God knows the hidden agenda. Hallelujah. And I feel it in my spirit. God knows the hidden agenda. He knows the agenda behind the smile. He knows the agenda behind the prophecy. He knows the agenda behind the worship. He knows the agenda. And God saw what Jezebel and Ahab did. And before they could get their hands on that land, God sent the prophet Nathan to them to expose them, to let them know God saw what you did. What you did in secret, God saw it. I don't know why we think that sometimes that we can do stuff and, and do and have a hidden agenda and think that the person that we're doing it against, just because they don't know, it don't mean that God don't know. It was the same thing with Miriam and Aaron when they had that private conversation and they were talking about Moses and God heard them. God said to them, I want to see y'all. And then he proceeds to tell them, Moses is my mouthpiece. He speaks on my behalf. And what happens? God allowed leprosy to come on Miriam's body. And the very person that they were talking about ended up interceding for her. And God even told him, no, I'm going to let her stay like this for a while so she can understand. Not to speak against the person that I have put in position. And now you look at Numbers, the 22nd chapter, and here's Balak 
trying to get Balaam to curse these people who ain't done nothing to him. They're just existing. They're just blessed. They're just blessed. You ever been going wrong and you ain't bothering nobody? You ain't, you just enjoying life. You just enjoying what God has done. You, you're doing what God say do. You walking in his ways and, 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 and you just operating in his will. And all of a sudden, something just comes, happens. Huh? And people start bothering you or that spirit start bothering you and you ain't doing nothing to them. Then here come the lies. Here come the controversy. Here come the made up stuff. Here come the conjured up stuff. And my brothers and sisters, we living in a time now to where people are believable. People can put it together so until it is believable. And I said this, and it looks like it's a continuation of it. A lot of people's uh, names have been assassinated. Characters have been assassinated by false accusation. Because people got together and plotted. Because they saw that God was prospering that person. And God was blessing that person. Or God had his hands on that person. And because of their flesh, and they became jealous of that individual and jealous of what God had put in that individual, then the plotting and the scheming takes place. The plotting and the scheming takes place, and then the agenda. That's why when, when Nehemiah was building that wall, and those men were trying to invite him to uh, come and, and go to church, well, come on over here, come, come. They were trying to get him to come down from building that wall, but they were also trying to trick him. Then they told him, if you don't do what we want you to do, what we're going to do is we're going to tell everybody that the only reason why you come up here to build that wall is because you're trying to start your own ministry and you're trying to persuade them to come to the ministry. In other words, what they were going to try to do was tell people he ain't doing it for what the reason y'all think he's doing it for. He's doing it for his own personal gain. He's doing it for his own personal gain. So, and, and they were going to try, but he did not let that stop him and he didn't let it intimidate him. I'm going to say this again. He didn't let that stop him or did he let that intimidate him? He continued to do the will of God. You got to stay on the wall. You got to stay on the wall. You can't, you can't, you can't allow distractions to stop you from doing what God says do. That's not an excuse. That's not an excuse. That's why I'm going to say this to all of us as leaders. And like I said, uh, I don't have all the answers, but I will tell you something. I've been through ministry for a long time and I've seen a whole lot of stuff. I'm going to say this to you. You can, cannot get to the place to where you feel as though that you give more power to the people that are trying to... Um, um, come against you or come against what the assignment is that God is doing. You can't, you can't do it because what you have to understand is you have to learn how to, 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 to not be distracted by what the enemy is trying to orchestrate because the only thing that, that the enemy wants to do is to get you to lose focus. And I said this uh, before, you got to understand that the devil cannot stop the will of God. That's why when I see people put it on, you know, even, you know, the devil can't stop the will of God. He ain't got that much power. Can't stop the will of God. And you're going to find this out right here. He can't stop the will of God. So what happens is we get into a situation to where we have to understand, we have to know what God said concerning us. We have to know what God is, has spoke on is. Uh, uh, that's bringing us out. Amen. God is the one that's, that's doing this. God is the one that is developing us. God is the one that is, that is, that is established us. God is the one that is placing us where we need to be placed. Why? Because we are his instrument and he's using us for and to his glory. He's using us for and to his glory. So what we have to do is we have to, 
we have to uh, learn how to, to trust God and we have to learn how to lean on God and we have to learn how to, to, to completely not be distracted by what the enemy is trying to do. Look what, look what Balak wants to do. He wants Balaam to use his gift to curse the people. Amen. I'm going to pause and I'm going to come right back. Y'all don't leave. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, 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 but my phone keeps ringing. I'm going to pause. I'm coming right back and I'm going to finish this teaching. Will y'all come back with me? I promise you I'll be right back. All right. God bless you.